This video is going to be about some of the things doctors don't tell you about implanted defibrillators, pacemakers, ICD devices, stuff you should ask your doctor. Now, I ain't saying that if your doctor suggests that you need one of these, that you not get it because of what I'm telling you, because... I tell you, it's, it probably saved my life, so I'm glad I've got it. But there are some things about it that you really should ask your doctor about. Okay, first of all, this is what the ICD device looks like. This is a Boston Scientific ICD, I don't know where it shows up or not. But I assume wires come out of this and they're running to your heart. For the, um, in case your heart slows down or something. This is actually the one that they put in me originally. They asked me if I wanted it, and I said, sure. Because <laughs> I had it replaced back in September. So, the reason why I had it replaced was not because of the battery having died or whatever, but the doctor decided that they needed to do a little bit more with me because I was having so many problems that I'm what's called a... Um... AV node ablation, which meant the pacemaker part of this device. This is an ICD device, which means it's a pacemaker and defibrillator all in one unit. The doctor decided with me that I needed this AV, AV node ablation, so this had to be replaced to have a third wire coming out of it. And the AV nodes in your heart, basically what they do is they tell your heart to beat. If you don't have those, or like with mine, they were lasered off, your heart can't beat unless it's got a pacemaker. So I'm fully relying on this pacemaker, at least the one I have in me right now. If it fails, I fail, you know. That's it. And... The um, thing, it's not uncomfortable all of the time, but you can see where the scar is and you can kind of see the shape of the box that it's in. Work my way around it here. It's, when you're left-handed, they would put it over here on the right side. That's my right hand. I know everything's mirror reversed in this. And this is my left hand, so I'm right handed, so they put it in my left shoulder. Now, I think the box was a little bit smaller when they originally put this other one in. So I'm thinking that this one's probably a little thicker to accommodate the extra stuff that it does. But all that aside, I wouldn't have changed having the operation. I had this original one put in in 2013. It was toward the end of the year, probably November, maybe October. I'm not sure if 2013. And this one where they replaced that one was in... September 13th of this year, I believe. So about three years, but they say the batteries on these things last about 10 years. Even if one fires. And that's one of the things I want to get to, too. <laughs> they 
put this in 2013. Well, this other one. They put it in in 2013, right toward the end of the year. And I was fine the rest of the year. And I was fine throughout the whole year of 2014. Wasn't a problem. Where it became a problem was um, February 13th of 2015. Which was a Friday, nevertheless. So, things do happen on Friday the 13th at times. Um, my girlfriend and her daughter, she was, her daughter was pregnant. So they went to a Kids Are Us store. And I didn't have any interest in that. And it was a Best Buy just down the shopping center. So I said, I'm going to walk down here to this Best Buy. And they said, okay. So I walked down to the Best Buy. It's not really that far away. And it wasn't a uphill grade walk or anything. But I walked into the store. And then I usually look at the movies and stuff. So that was all the way in the back of the store. And when I got to the back of the store... I felt like I was out of breath, but that's the only warning sign I had of anything going to happen. I was just a little out of breath from the walk, I guess. That's why I'm on disability now. Yeah, I can't do much without getting out of breath. I mean, the situation's gotten way worse since then, but... I was in the Best Buy, and all of a sudden, I, like I said, I felt short of breath. Next thing I know, I just felt like a jolt of electricity. I actually thought my phone had shorted out. I wasn't even thinking about the defibrillator. I was like, what the heck? Did my phone short out? What? What's going on? And some people seen me standing there. This is in Jacksonville, Florida. I didn't know anybody down there. Some people were in the store, and they said, do you need some help? And I said, I have a defibrillator, and the thing just fired. And by this time, I, I'd figured out what happened by that time. They said, do you need to get some help? And I said, yeah, please. And they went over and got a manager. Manager, they were as nice as could be. They, um come over there and they helped me and I called my girlfriend at the time she'll remain nameless because we're not together anymore but um I called her and she come running back up there bad knee and all when she got there I just started bawling not because it hurt because it just scared the ever living crap out of me so I'm sitting there crying, and these people at this Best Buy, I mean, they were wonderful. They manager give one of the other workers his credit card to go buy me a water, all that. They found an aspirin for me because when they called 911, they said, give him an aspirin, have him chew it up, a 325. So I done that. 325 aspirin tastes pretty bad, but I mean... You got to do what you got to do. So, went to the hospital. Like I said, it was Friday. And anybody that's ever been to a hospital knows that nothing gets done on Friday. You go into a hospital on Friday, you might as well expect to be there till Monday, which was the case here. I wound up in the hospital the rest of the day Friday. Saturday and Sunday and part of the day Monday until they finally decided to release me later on that afternoon. But they wanted me to do a follow-up appointment, which I didn't because I was like, I just want to get home. <laughs> now, we were down there for the birth of her daughter's baby, but 
I mean, she was due, I think, the following week. Like, the Wednesday of the following week. So that was Friday 13th, 14, 15, C-78, the 18th, I believe. She was due. I don't know why we went down there so early. We went down there on that Thursday. But that's not the point. But after that, I called Emory, Emory University Hospital in Atlanta. They're the ones that take care of me, the ones that put this in. The ones that put the new one in as well. Plus the ones that's operated on me three times. I've had three open heart surgeries, so. Um, most recent was in 2011, but just talking about this defibrillator thing. There are some questions you should ask your doctor. About it, I tried to ask him, but you know, they say, Don't worry about it, the chances of that are slim, it's fine. Now, I don't blame the doctor for any of this, don't get me wrong. I'm just doing this as kind of a hey, you know, maybe there are a few things you should ask. But I'd ask the doctor, What if somebody? Say the thing fires, and they're trying to do CPR on me. Is it going to shock them because they're touching me? And he's like, it'd probably give them a little bit of a jolt. So I'm like, okay, if I'm in a pool and the thing fires, is that going to shock everybody in the pool because electricity travels in a pool? He's like, it wouldn't be a very bad shock if it did. And then I asked him this. What do I do if it fires? Now, this was before it fired. And he said, don't worry about it. It's set to not even take any action unless your heart rate gets up above, I believe it was 85 beats per minute, which seemed low to me at the time. But, hell, it was fine for... Over two years, so I didn't think nothing of it. Apparently, my heart rate got up to above that 85, and the pacemaker part of that ICD device could not pace me out of it, so it popped you. popped me. And the thing about it is, when these things go off, you have no warning whatsoever. You may feel out of breath or... Feel your heart beat weird. My heart, I can feel it anyway because I have an artificial heart valve which makes a pretty loud noise every time it beats. And, um, yeah, you don't really have any warning when one of those goes off. It's just going to go off. Now, I had an incident happen. I think it was earlier this year it was in january yeah i was in gatlinburg tennessee which if you've watched the news lately a lot of people know where gatlinburg tennessee is because good majority of that area was on fire last week and earlier this week thank goodness we finally got some rain put some of that out that's awful. They caught two guys that had set the fire. I think they were to put them under the jail. But anyway, that's not part of the point I'm trying to make. We went to Gatlinburg, and we walked down the street, and I didn't realize it was down the street to the winery because my brother had a coupon he wanted to use to get a bottle of wine. We walked down there, and tasted, sampled a few wines, I think they gave us like four samples, and then we walked back. It was probably about a mile there and a mile back. The walk down there wasn't that bad. You know, I don't think I was even out of breath when I got down to the store. The walk back, on the other hand, was in a different point, and I didn't even know until later that the street was actually 
at an angle. <laughs> so when we walked down to the winery, we were actually walking downhill. But to walk back to the car, we were walking uphill. And that's where the problem came in. By the time we got to the car, I felt like I was going to pass out. I mean, literally. I was like, I gotta get to the car. I'm going to die. And I believe my pacemaker was probably getting ready to fire at that time. But luckily the defu the defibrillator was getting ready to fire. But luckily the pacemaker was able to pace me down, I think, the pacemaker clinic, because this thing sent a report to Boston Scientific every week. And to these reports, they um, can track how your heart's doing. This thing holds every bit of information from the time it's put in to the time it's removed. So... I mean, your whole life history on your heartbeat from the time they put this thing in is um, recorded on there. So it can be accessed at any time. I actually have a machine that reads it and then it sends the report to them. Well, they called me about a week later, I guess. And they said, did something happen on the... I think it was like the 18th of January, and I'm like, nah, I can't think of anything. Why? They said your heart rate went way up. It went up to like 190 or 150 beats per minute. And then the pacemaker paced you out of it. It was within about four seconds of firing, which meant it was going to shock me, defibrillate me again, scare the hell out of me. But it managed to pace me out of it because when I was in Jacksonville in the hospital, one good thing that came out of that was that they realized that at Emory they had set the stats too low on the defibrillator. 85 beats per minute wasn't cutting it at my age. At the time, I guess I was 42. I'm 44 now. And, um, at the time, the, um, they set the defibrillator too low. Like I said, 85 beats per minute, that seems kind of low to me because you start working out, your heart rate goes way up. And I don't know how high it goes up, but they reset it. In Jacksonville, they had a team from Boston Scientific there, and they reset some of the settings on it to where I think it was set at 120 beats per minute, which was better. Of course, the walk in Gatlinburg, then, when it went to 150 beats per minute, it had to pace it down 30 beats per minute in order for it not to fire. And it managed to do so. So I'm grateful that it didn't fire because, of course, I also know now what to do if it fires. At the time in Jacksonville, I didn't know because I, it, the doctor never told me what to do if it fired. And I didn't ask because he kept saying that it was a remote possibility that it would ever fire anyway, so... I thought, well, it's a remote possibility. Why would I worry about it? So, call 911, going to the hospital by ambulance. That was obviously not the right thing to do. The, um, I mean, in this case, I guess it did turn out to be the right thing to do because they were able to readjust and change some settings on the defibrillator so it wouldn't happen again. And Emory approved of everything when I went back to see them a few weeks later because I flew back home. I flew into Atlanta and my mom and my brother come pick me up at the airport. So I just left my girlfriend down there with her pregnant daughter. 
probably part of the reason we're not together anymore. I don't know. She is crazy anyway. But, um, yeah. They don't really tell you what to do. It's like you got to figure this out. But apparently, and he told me this whenever I saw him after I got home, he told me what I should have done was when the defibrillator went off, say a few cuss words, get your bearings back, go back home and sit down and rest for a while, which is the advice I'll take if it ever fires again, because now I know what to expect. That's why I asked him all the questions before, like, what's it feel like? What's... If it fires, what I do? Like I said, I never asked him that at the time, but that's why I'm making this video for anybody who's getting one of these devices. To ask your doctor a lot of questions about it. I mean, ask how long that battery's gonna last. Every time you go in for a checkup, ask them how much longer you got left on the battery. Especially if you're in the situation where I am, where it's the only thing keeping you alive. Always ask. Don't be afraid to ask. And if they don't give you the answer right away, push them on it. Because I wish I'd push the doctor on it a little more. Like I said, I don't blame the doctor. I don't blame memory. You know, stuff happens. I'm not that concerned about it anymore. I mean, what happened happened. That's in the past. And, you know, that's all it is. I do recommend if the doctor tells you you need one, to get one. Because, I mean, it could save your life. I mean, Jacksonville, it didn't really save my life. It just thought I was in a, having a problem and fired. In fact, they've all s described it as a misfire. That it shouldn't have went off. Imagine if it still been said it the way it was back in January. It would have fired again. Probably would have fired several other times too, and I would have been like, "What? Well, now wait just a minute, something's going on here." But the thing is, settings were reset on it, right? Now, unfortunately, when they put the new one in, I didn't get a chance to talk to the doctor afterwards, and I haven't talked to the doctor since. So I haven't had a chance to ask him how this thing's set up or whatever, but. The Boston Scientific Techs, they tell me that it's set the way the old one was. So you shouldn't have any problem with it. Time will tell. So far, I haven't had any problems other than trying to lay on this thing to sleep. It puts my arm asleep. And it hurts every morning when I get up. Until I start moving around. It's like it gets bruised around where the box is. I think they tried to move the box because it feels like it's further out. And you can see it. It's got kind of an edge right here. Which when I try to lay on this side, it cuts into my arm and cuts circulation off on my arm. That's not very comfortable. But I've always slept on my left side, so... I don't have much of a choice. I try to sleep on my right side, but most of the time I can't. And I don't see who can sleep on their back looking straight up. See that in those commercials all the time? It looks so awkward. People sitting there. I don't know. I, don't know. I always sleep on my side. Left side, usually. So. That's really about all I've got on this. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments, and I'll try to get back to you. If you like any of what you heard, 
want to, you can give it a thumbs up. If you don't feel a... If you feel like you wasted your time watching this video, you can give it a thumbs down. I'm not picky. I'm just trying to spread some information around in case people need to know. I may do some other videos about my other heart problems and about my AVM as well, but for right now, I'm just going to leave it at that. And I will see you next time.